Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Wong Nam. I'm also the group, group leader of our KNCB team. So today, our topic is BMW Group, which is as same as the first presentation. Uh, first of all, please allow me to introduce my team member. This is Sheila Zhao Kong Ling. She will be in charge of the strategy part. And this is Wu Jing Emma. will be in charge of the 7P, 7P, 7P analysis. Dora will be in charge of the pastor analysis. And King Fisso will be in charge of the SWOT. Okay, King will be in charge of the SWOT analysis. And this is uh, Binta will be do the financial analysis and high mark marketing force. Okay guys, please move to the to your seat and I will be starting. Thank you. Before I do the introduction part, I would like you all of you to see our poster design. Because our design concept is based on PLW 100 years ceremony logo. And as you see there are lots of triangles here in that logo. So last year is PLW's 100 year ceremony. So before that Let's move to the first section. 1916, BMW was founded, and 1923, after Germany failed the First World War, BMW was not allowed to produce the airplane engine, so they start to produce the first motorcycle, and which is launched in the Paris Auto Show. 1928, which is the first car model, was launched out by BMW. The car's name is Dixie. And 1954, which means uh, after the Second World War, BMW has, the company has fought to a very hard period. And it's this car saves the company a lot, which is called Zeta. 1973, BMW has, in this year, has two big things for BMW. The first is the head office in Munich was set up, which is called Four Cylinder Building. And also, BMW has set up the first plant outside of Germany, which is in Roslyn, South Africa. And in 1994, BMW Group has set up another plant in USA, South Carolina, and the name of the plant is Spartanburg. And in 2004, this is the first time for BMW to come to China, and they made up one company, global company in China, which is called BMW Brilliance Automotive. And in the same year, the Shenyang plant was founded. And 2016, which is BMW 100 years ceremony. Okay, our next topic will be based on the will be based on the human capital. Until last year, BMW will have 124,000 employees all over the world, and 90% of them is in automotive segment. And the rest of them is in motorcycle and BMW finance segment. And the next topic will be marketing. As you know, BMW has will uh, take the number two sales volume lead in the luxury car brand. And BMW has more than six thousand dealership all over the world. And during this six thousand dealership, the most important market, which is North America, including USA and Canada, and China mainland, and uh, Europe will be the first biggest three market. And in China, the last year, BMW has purchased more than 1 billion RMB for the marketing budget. So it's a big purchase. My last topic is the supply chain. As you see, you can see here, I draw a world map. BMW recently has 20 plants in the world, which including which including in Europe, which is 13 plants, which is which, which is located in Germany and Britain, and in Asia there are three plants, which is located in India, Thailand, and China, and uh, in USA they have two plants, Mexico one, and these all plants also uh, make up the 20 plants. And each plant covers each continental of the world, so it saves a lot, lots, lots of budget for transportation. And also, they, are have, they, they are also have some like partnership of plants in the world. And in Malaysia, there's one partner plant, which is in Queen, which produces the BMW model cars. Okay, my last topic will be the resource allocation. In Germany, 
it will take 42.6 percentage from the resources of the global BMW, and for Eastern Europe it takes 90.7 percentage, NASDAQ takes 15.9 percentage, and the rest of the Western Europe takes 15.8 percentage. Asia and Australia takes 4.6 percentage, and Africa takes 1.4 percentage. So this is my part. I think from my basic introduction, you will have a basic insight for the other group. So next, please welcome my team member Shila to the stage. Hello everyone. I'm Zhang Yu, the slowest calling Shila. And my country will focus on BMW Group strategy. When we talk about a strategy of a 100 years company, I think everyone will be treated in two points. One, what's what is the BMW Group strategy in past, now, and in future? Two, what is BMW future strategy for points? Okay, next, I will answer these two questions. For the first question, strategy for initial, now, and future. Just now, my group leader Wang had just mentioned, BMW Group had just passed its 100 years birthday celebration in 2016. In 2016, the BMW CEO had done a presentation to all the inventors of the brand um, of the branch during the BMW 100 years ceremony. He has mentioned the BMW group strategy very clearly. Everyone, please look at here. Looking looking the period 2002. 2001 to 2003, BMW used the strategy of premier brand strategy, which contains technology development, quality improvement, dealer network development, and customer service improvement, and market, market share improvement. During the period 2004 to 2016, which is a very important period for BMW, BMW Group has developed a very successful strategy which has made BMW as tripping of CEO's value premier auto brand since 2011 to 2015. This strategy is called strategy number one, which contains three elements. They are shaping the future profitability, access to technology and customers. As I mentioned just now, BMW CEO has first time launched a new strategy for BMW Group in one 100 year ceremony presentation, which is called strategy number one next. This, this number one next have, have, have a close leakage with BMW until 2020. Also, this strategy will lead BMW Group to another 100 years development. Three main points will be included in this strategy. Benchmark model in luxury, dynamic and efficient image, technology and innovation leader. Next, I'm going to explain these four points one by one. Let's see the first point. Benchmark model in luxury segment. Here, the benchmark model refers to points important car models in BMW product, product series. The, the sixth generation of BMW 7 series, which is also BMW flagship car model, is the high, highest level in BMW product, product model. As you know, in premium auto brand industry, the highest level product model has a very important role to build up the brand image. It's getting the best technology, best carbon materials, best engine, and best artificial intelligence. As I mentioned, BMW will be the technology and innovation leader in auto industry. So, to reach this uh, achievement, BMW will be focused on both powertrain technology and digitization on the future. BMW supplies our partners, for example, EMG Technology Limited. 
The next is hydrogen, also we call it hybrid technology. The engine technology combines electric power with petrol power. This technology is developed by BMW Development Center only. The digitalization contains connecting artificial intelligence autonomous driving. So this is my part. Uh, next, let uh, welcome my partner Emma to introduce BMW Group 7PS. Hello everyone, my name is Yuki. Let me introduce the 7PS of the uh, 7PS part. Uh, in our exercise, we also use the 7PS2 to look into the BMW's marketing strategy. It consists of the product place and uh, price, uh, promotion, physical evidence, and the precise and the people. The first one I talk about, the, we talk about the product. BMW Group is focused on the luxury two-wheel and four-wheel automobiles and also include its uh, engines for all over the world. It has its own vehicle under three brands, BMW and uh, Mini and Rolls-Royce. This product also can classify the as the inch market. It is not only a good, it is more like a sale performance and uh, consistent simple. The second we talk about the place. Now BMW Group has uh, about 6,000 dealerships and the sales representatives in 150 countries globally. Let's look at our poster. The finger shows now the US and Germany and China is the largest market for the BMW group. Um, as a, as it is being a world-renowned vehicle manufacturer, we are gaining the new world customers across the globe. The company now set up, up a large number of factories to cater this such future demand. Recently, BMW has uh, uh, set up all its uh, factories in some in over two countries. Uh, they also set up some uh, factories in some smaller and emerging markets for local requirements and uh, export to nearby countries. The third, we talk about the price. The BMW pricing strategy can be described, uh, described as the premium. Due to its advanced and uh, advanced features and design, make the vehicle come for expensive price. Mini Cooper and uh, Rolls Royce are priced a feature here than the BMW Ground Ridge. However, BMW has uh, adopted uh, dominical pricing in some smaller and uh, newer countries like uh, uh, in India and Brazil. The fourth, we talk about the promotion. The BMW Group has been a strong advertiser by using media channels like TV, online shows, and uh, billboards, and the print ads, and so on. So that it can create a continuous round uh, awareness. Beyond that, BMW also as a participant uh, or an organizer uh, in various international, global, international Release and the other sport meet sport events for a long time. This event has learned the BMW group recognized as a faster and a reliable automobile over the years. The fifth, we talk the physical evidence. All the events of BMW group are their physical events. For example, like their logo, their their logo, their beauty and uh, their business card and their exhibition and so on. The sixth, we talk about the people. Uh, the BMW Group's employees are the four average distilleries in the local. In addition, they offer some social benefits, like a uh, retail model, as well as the, as, as well 
at the health and accident insurance, invest in some employees, they also invest in their employees' future by developing their skills and uh, promote them according to their individual strengths. In their, the success of their effort is reflected in the high level of their employee satisfaction. The sixth, the seventh, we talk about the process. They think every person is unique. So everything about their brand, their service, and their product is uh, they offer is uh, individual and unique. They provide some extended service uh, to their customers, uh, like uh, software. Uh, uh, like uh, they make some software uh, uh, to make the uh, customers to let them have a good experience in their in using their cars, like drive now and the reach now, park now and the charge now, just like its vehicle. BMW Group service is designed for the maximum a customer's orientation. Okay, that's my part. Welcome my next partner, Dora Jose. Okay, thank you very much. As my group leader introduced me, my name is Dora, and I'll be taking you along the first analysis. First of all, we have to understand why the BMW has to use to incorporate personal analysis as a, mass, as a marketing strategy in its operations. Personal analysis is mostly used when a company wants to go global. So on our view, we decided to take China as a sample. So BMW went to invest in China, and thus it has to look upon the personal analysis, which involves the political aspect, the political factors, the economic factors, the social factors, the technological factors, the environmental factors, and the economic factors as well. So let me start by explaining to you the political factor point of view. And the political factor, we have to understand that before going anywhere global to invest, you have to make sure that the political stability of that place is favorable. So for BMW to open up its wings and going to China, it was favorable because China's political stability was good and that made, made them to have a healthy business environment. Also, the recycling ability, which is incorporated within the BMW group, is well accepted in China as it saved the environment as well. Also, the government rules do have, do, don't bind it enough towards the expansion of any business, business, business activity within China. So for BMW, that was a favorable condition and they could easily expand in the Chinese market. Coming to the economic part, the, coming to the economic part, this assisted in the rise of the GDP of the, China, of, the China, of the Chinese business environment. So that was favorable for China, for BMW to go and invest there. Also, as we understand, once BMW decided to go and open it in China, it created employment in the Chinese environment. So a lot of people got employed under the, under the established BMW plant in China. And thus, it enabled them to rise the standard of living in the area. Also, the, the foreign currency fluctuation in China is favorable. As we all understand that, the foreign currency fluctuation goes hand in hand with the, with the right and fuel prices. So if the foreign currency is stable, that means that even the fuel prices won't be rising at that much level, it will be favorable as well. So coming down to the social factor, we have to understand that once a company comes to any country, we really, we really need security and we really need assurance in that company towards our environment. So for the BMW group to invest in China, it was well accepted by the Chinese people socially as the car itself has a, has a environmental friendly condition due to its operation. So that was better for them and they could easily trust on the BMW investment. Also coming to the other part, that is the, the income of the people in China. This, this, is well, this is well divided as to, uh, due to the culture and demographics of the Chinese environment. So people could afford, since it was a car that was expensive, but 
On the other hand, it was a car that was user friendly and it was a car that could define somebody in a place because it could define people of a certain niche to establish themselves as a prestigious group in the Chinese world. Okay, coming back to the technological part. So here we have to see like, how did it, how, how was BMW ready to face the technological part once going to China? Here we're talking about the innovation. So it was easy for the BMW to open up to the Chinese market because it had to incorporate the Chinese technological aspects as in China already, as we know, they do have their own luxury brands. So BMW had to incorporate that so that to create something special for them and make, and on the other hand, make it more, much more easier to access to the other people. Also, we have the legislative taxes towards big engine cars in China has been well moderated. It's not high, it's something that is favorable. So for any business environment, you do not expect the government to put too much barriers upon your business. Because at the end of the day, you would like to satisfy your customer, but then you want to earn more and you want to expand. Now. Then also, the, under the technology part, the people really wanted a hybrid. But yes, you bring us a hybrid car, but we, we want it to, to be fuel efficiency. So for BMW in China, that was very well incorporated. Also, we, we have to check upon the environmental aspect, which is the C. And here we, have, we, we could see that the BMW incorporated the carbon dioxide emission strategy. That is user friendly to the environment and the weather in general. As we know that the world now is going towards the towards the weather issues that the, the global warming warming is all over, and in China, I think the global warming is worse. So, bringing incorporating a car that already emits too much due to its big engine would be would not be favorable for them. So, for them to have the carbon dioxide emission, it was a best idea. Coming to the last part, that is the, legis the, legis the, the legal factors. We have to understand that BMW, itself being a global, a global company, it opened, well, once it opens up its wings to other areas, which in our example is China, it really has to focus upon the standards that are set within the European market. And also it has to, it has to operate towards the new car assessment restriction strategy that has been set in, in Germany. So this, wherever they go, as long as they want to satisfy their customer, they want to protect their customer, and they want to make their, they, they want to make a good reputation of their company, they really have to be bound within the strategies and standards that have been set by the European Euro, European Euro, European standards. So this will enable a person in, in Germany to drive a car, a car of the same standard in China, same standard in Malaysia same standard all over the world. So for that, I think I've taken you through the first analysis, that is the market strategy for any company that is global and that would like to expand to other countries. Thank you very much and allow me to welcome my fellow presenter, Faisal. Hello everyone, my name is Faisal. Uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, uh, global of First of all, I'm uh, talking about this film. Uh, there are several points. Uh, first point is the most outstanding uh, automatic uh, brand in the world. Uh, we know that the BMW brand is the second brand uh, in the world. They only can compete with the Mercedes brand and the uh, Toyota brand. Um, they, they have a good brand recognition and good uh, brand reputation. Uh, we have believed it because they are operating the luxurious car and uh, <clears throat> their their car, car is very comfortable for uh, the driving. The next one is uh, geographically diversified revenue streams. <laughs> Actually, they are not dependent on the home market. They always look uh, for the uh, geographical. <clears throat> uh, they always uh, generate to the revenue uh, and how to pay the revenue earn. Mm, uh, last year in 2016, they sold in uh, China uh, 464,000 units. They sold. There is a 70.2% uh, was revenue. Uh, yes. Next one is uh, the effective partnership with China. Yeah, uh, the main uh, main mar market target is the uh, China big, big, uh, because China has the uh, um, uh, most automotive brand in the world. 
they they have uh, sold us 2026 million uh, units they sold last year. Uh, in China, they have uh, one partnership, they name it the Brilliance Automotive. So, BMW and Brilliance Automotive from together, they uh, name it the BMW or Brilliance Automotive Limited. And next one is uh, proficiency in hybrid and e electric cars. Uh, in 2013, they launched their uh, first uh, hybrid car, their name is the BMW i3. Mm, uh, after launch there, they sold uh, 1 lakh units, and that is the best car selling in the world. And strong strategy to meet upcoming challenges. Yes, uh, all of them are looking for how to they challenge their uh, strategy. They have three strategies. Uh, the one is e-mobility and mobility, and uh, next one is autonomous. Now I am going to talk about weakness of PMW, lowly automotive brand and minor product. They have lowly uh, portfolio, they have uh, three products, the, the uh, name is Mini, uh, Royal Racing and the, also the BMW. Uh, they are not provide any uh, stuff like the bus and any uh, big, big, big uh, vehicle things. They are provide just a car and motorcycle. Uh, next one is increasing depth level. Yeah. In this history, they have a big debt, debt level appeared in 2014 and 2015. Uh, 130 million uh, debt was there. Next one is strategic alliance. And, uh, they have a very few strategic alliances, but uh, they are good in R&D. Uh, implementation development based on that, they uh, went for the some companies. And they are, uh, they, this is their leg, uh, also the leggings. Uh, this is the opportunity. Expected rise in the price of fuel in the market. Uh, price fuel is very low, but in the near future, uh, price will uh, high. That this is the ex expected for the customer. Actually, well, this is not the hamper for the customer, so um, the uh, customer wants more vehicles. <coughs> Next one is demand for growing UA exchange rates. Uh, BMW revenue, most revenue comes from the Euro zone. So, uh, if uh, Euro exchange uh, you would uh, dollar exchange that so that that will be acceptable for the BMW. And next one is new model release uh, timing and frequency. Yeah, uh, they always looking for the uh, how uh, creating the new model because uh, customer wants uh, the, the new things and the frequency. Now we are talking about threats of BMW. Strong competitor Google. Uh, already Google and Tesla they launched the electric car uh, in the market and this is the threat for the. Um, BMW, so uh, if they should go forward, so they have to the produce and new things. Now I am talking about the economic contribution of uh, BMW. First of all, create jobs. Uh, they, uh, there is 2,000 jobs uh, they are providing in uh, one year. Next tax contribution, they have a good tax contribution. Uh, as the employer, if you hire or rehire, after that you will get the RIA, that means retirement income account. Uh, you, you can get uh, money from that. Um, next one is uh, help society through CSR. CSR, that, that means uh, corporate social responsibility. They have the, one of the best life cycle is the corporate social responsibility. Uh, so, so their cycle is the, uh, first of all, they're going for the product development, then they go for the product production, then they go for the product utilization. Uh, now I'm uh, showing you the, uh, comparing 2015 and 2015. In America, uh, in America, uh, last year they, they lost the 19% market share, uh, but in Europe they uh, earned 48% uh, unit sold, and also the same in China, they uh, earned the 72% uh, unit sold. So uh, I, I have finished my part, now I would like to request Binda to continue our presentation. Good day everyone, my name is Lisa Karam. I'm going to talk about the financial analysis of the BMW Group. The microprocess high process and the relationship between Formula One and BMW Group. The financial analysis of the BMW Group. The target set for year 2016 was met by BMW Group. This achievement was still attained despite difficulties obtained during the year, like social difficulty, political difficulty, economic difficulty, and the strong competitive industry in the automobile market. Over 2 million BMW brands were sold in a single year for the first time. And this was achieved by a growth in the sales of BMW 
meaning vice versa. And also an increase was obtained in the financial service segment of contract portfolios. The revenue of PMW in 2016 compared to 2015. In 2016, PMW had a revenue of 94.1 billion euros. Compared to 2015, yet they had 92.2 billion euros. For six consecutive years, BFW sales growth has increased, and in the sixth year, it attained a new cash growth reflected in their profit before interest in tax, their earnings before interest in tax, and their net profit. The BFW group revenue can be grouped into four regions Europe, including Germany, generating the highest level. The highest percentage of revenue for the BMW group, followed by Asia, including China, followed by America, including the United States of America, and lastly, other regions. All these growth has reflected in the sales, all these growth has reflected in an increase in the room of BMW's net profit, which we can see in the graph here. From the graph, you can see that the sales growth was attained from the from the, from the automotive, followed by the motorcycle and financial services. These are the strong core groups of the PMW group. The next I'll be talking about is the Micropolitan Five Forces. The Micropolitan Five Forces is used for industry analysis and for business strategic development. The Micropolitan Five Forces are five in number and can be grouped into two that is, the horizontal competition and the vertical competition. The horizontal competition has three forces under it, and the vertical competition has two forces under it. The three forces under the horizontal competition are the threat of new entrants, the threat of new substitute, and industry rivalry. Right for vertical competition, the two forces under it are bargaining power suppliers and bargaining power of buyers. Under the threat of new entrants, the threat of new entrants is moderate for the PMW group. Why? That is in the industry where the PMW group operates. Why is it moderate? It's as a result of advancements in technology. Despite durable barriers to entry, e.g., cost and time of entry, this has made it a little bit difficult for new entrants to quickly penetrate the market. This is why the threat of new entrants is moderate. Industry rivalry. The, all over the globe, the top Luxury brands have been competing to remain at the top, but BMW has maintained the highest sales growth. If you read through the financial statement for year 2016, you see that BMW has attained the highest sales growth when it comes to sales of auto luxury automobiles. But it has seen competitors like Mercedes Benz, Audi, Lexus, and so on. The trend of close substitute. The threat of fuel substitute is low. Why is the threat of fuel substitute low? It is because the BMW brand has liaised itself with wealthy personnel all over the globe. Because BMW brand satisfies a want, satisfies a need rather than a want. People drive cars because of transportation, but most people that buy the BMW brand buy it to satisfy a need. That is to give the self perception, the, the self perception of affluence of prestige. So, most, so that is why the threat of close substitute is low because people would rather go for the BMW brand because that is the brand that they have decided to stick with. So thinking switching to another brand is low for that particular consumer or should I say customer. Then the vertical competition we have to the bargaining power suppliers and the bargaining power of buyers. The bargaining power of suppliers is low. It is important for BMW group suppliers to maintain a relationship with BMW. BMW Group has over 13,000 suppliers all over the globe. And most of the products and services of BMW Group suppliers are not unique in nature. So it means it can be gotten by other suppliers in the market. This has made the bargaining power of suppliers low. The bargaining power of, buy of buyers is also low, as I earlier said. BMW brands most times are patronized by wealthy personnel. This is because they want to satisfy a need rather than a want. So therefore, the, the idea of switching to another one, which has made it difficult for buyers to be able to manipulate or be able to control the prices of these products, because it is basically consumed 
by wealthy people. The last one I'll be taking is the relationship between BMW and Formula One. The active years of BMW and Formula One was in the 2006 to 2009. So in the 1980s, BMW became an engine constructor for Formula One. In 1983, BMW was the first company that built the first turbo engine that was able to win a race in 1983 in the World Championship. So it was able to power a driver to achieve World Championship success in 1983. This was an achievement for the BMW group in the Formula One race. In 2000, was when BMW became an official, became officially a Formula One constructor. So in 2006, BMW um, became active in Formula One race. In 2008, BMW won a race in the Canadian Grand Prix, which was won by the driver Robert Kubica. In 2009, which was unsuccessful for BMW, BMW decided to pull out of it because it was experiencing economic downturn. And in 2010, though BMW was not a participant in the race, but its name was officially attached to the Formula One race. If you look at the financial statement from the year BMW became a participant in the Formula One race, you will see that it has affected BMW revenue positively because BMW decided to use Formula One as a strong marketing tool to be able to penetrate the market in which Formula One is a, um, in which Formula One has a strong hold in this country. So BMW, so BMW decided to use this opportunity to use Formula One as a strong marketing, marketing tool to increase its sales and revenue. So all, all this is all we have decided to talk about concerning our BMW group analysis, global network and innovation. As we, have all, as we have all spoken, we have all spoken about the globalization of the BMW group. In order we talked about the supply chain marketing, the strategy, the pestle, the seven P's. We also talk about the SWOT analysis. We talked about the economic contribution of the BMW automotive. And I talked about the financial analysis. I talked I talk about the Microsoft's five market forces. And lastly, I spoke about BMW and Formula One relationship. Thank you for listening.